Hi everyone, today I'm going to read Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree by Robert Berry. Mr. Willoughby's Christmas Tree came by special delivery. Full and fresh and glistening green, the biggest tree he had ever seen. He dashed downstairs to open the door. This was the moment he'd waited for. A magnificent tree, splendid, he cried. Please, sir, won't you carry it right inside? I think it might look best this year, right in the parlor corner here. But once the tree stood in its place, Mr. Willoughby made a terrible face. The tree touched the ceiling, then bent like a bow. Oh, good heavens, he gasped. Something must go. Baxter, the butler, was called on in haste to chop off the top, though it seemed quite a waste. That's great, Mr. Willoughby cried with glee. Now we can start to trim my tree. When the trimming was well underway, the top was placed on a silver tray. Baxter said, I know just who'd be delighted with this Christmas tree. So it was presented to Miss Adelaide, Mr. Willoughby's upstairs maid. Won't this tree be a pretty sight when I have trimmed it later tonight? But the top, oh dear, I'm so afraid, will have to be cut, sighed Miss Adelaide. And so was scissor, scissors, sharp and long. She snipped off the top while she hummed a song. The top was set out of the out the very next day and back of the house to be thrown away. That little treetop caught the eye of Tim, the gardener, passing by. He certainly was not about to see that little tree thrown out. He hurried home straight away to see what Mrs. Tim would say. Fa la la, surprise, surprise! His wife could not believe her eyes. But our house, she said, is so snug and small, I do not believe we need it all. And before Tim had a chance to shout, she cut off the top and threw it out. Barnaby Bear was padding by. It almost hit him in the eye. Now, who would throw a tree away so very close to Christmas Day? I'll take it home. That's what I'll do. Look, Mama Bear, I have a present for you. Isn't it a pretty tree, Yon Barnaby, quite drowsily. But Little Bear, standing off far, cried out, That tree won't hold a star. Barnaby said, Let's cut a hunk off of the bottom here at the trunk. But Mama Bear just shook her head and sliced the treetop off instead. Jolly by golly, Barnaby said with a kick. Mama, that surely is just the right trick. Let's trim it with bells and honey rings, some berries and tinsel, and popcorn on strings. Mama said, trim it just as you like. I've got to tidy up for the night. This top we won't need anymore. I'll put it just outside the door. Later on that frosty night, 
frisky fox came into sight. He spied the treetop, rubbed his chin, opened his sack, and stuffed the top in. He scampered home and jumped his gate. This Christmas present couldn't wait. It's even better than mince meat pie, said Mrs. Fox with a happy sigh. Then the foxes saw that their Christmas prize was just a wee bit oversized. There, my dear, don't you worry. I'll fix this top now in a hurry. Benjamin Rabbit found it then, just outside the fox's den. It seems, he thought, most certainly, Santa left that for my family. Look, he cried. See the tree I found? With that, he called his family round. Then there was a merry-making, rollicking, frolicking, carrot-shaking celebration around the tree, all were as happy as rabbits can be. Benjamin Rabbit, with his own hand, sliced a carrot and made a stand. Now let's see how this will look in our little chimney nook. But right away, the children cried, look, it's leaning off to one side. It's too tall, that's all, said Mrs. Rabbit. And as though it were a summer carrot, she gave it a chop and threw away the top. The mistletoe mouse just happened to see that tiny tip of a Christmas tree. He pulled it through the snow and ice up some stairs. He fell down twice. At last he reached his cozy house Let's just, it's just the right size, said Mrs. Mouse. Then at the top, if you please, they put a star made out of cheese. Oh, wasn't it grand to have a tree exactly like Mr. Willoughby?